Okay. Hey, thanks for doing this, man. Hey! It's just, it's just what we do, but we're live right now. Is that time? <laughs> Happy one year anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Here, no problem. On. Is that you or is that me that's making that noise? I can't tell. I don't hear anything. That must be me. Here, hold on, let me make sure that I'm not playing something. <laughs> yeah, usually as long as people can hear the, the person that they actually want to talk to, even if you have to do some adjustments, that's all good. Right. <laughs> Look, there's some people in here just wishing you already a happy anniversary. Ooh. Mis Mr. Nashington. Happy. Oh, I must have the stream going on, because that's, I think, what I'm hearing. <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh, where am I? Yeah, well, whenever you're ready, I figure we'll just we'll play through some portions of the game. We'll just talk about the history of it. I mean, hey, you've got I'm sure you've got a lot to say. It's been a year, right? You've, you've been pretty busy with some other projects. I think it's yeah. been pretty exciting. Yeah, no, it's been a crazy year. It's been kind of, um, I don't know. It's definitely not how I might have imagined it, but I guess it's kind of, it makes a lot of sense how it's been. Is there any way that I can see the uh, the comments and get involved in that? I guess I can log yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, if you just, yeah, just log into your Twitch account and you'll be good to go. Right, I'm on the wrong place. I am on the, I am on the uh, Leviathan website instead of the... Oh, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, well, here. Sorry. Here we go. We'll give you that. This is the right place. All right, and I don't know if I'm logged in or not. Do you remember me? Do you remember me, Twitch? I don't know if you do. No, you don't. Okay. Log in. I don't know if you do. No, you don't. Okay. Something I've never done before when I when I fired this back up. <laughs> I didn't have my Xbox controller plugged in, so it just had all my, you know, the standard keys for your mouse and keyboard, or just the keyboard in this case. And then you just plug it in, and it seamlessly transitions, which I really appreciate. Oh yeah, you know what? Like that's the thing is, is that we spent some time on some weird things. Like we spent some time on controllers and allowing three players to play on the keyboard and all sorts of stuff like that because we were really self-conscious of the fact that we were launching on PC and we had a local co-op game. Uh, so we kind of thought that maybe it would be better to you know, address all of those issues so that hopefully you know, people would be willing to do that. Because I know that it's hard for people to, I mean, this was before Steam Big Picture and even with Steam Big Picture, not a lot of people connect their stuff up, right? Um, so, Oh god, no, I don't know what my... <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't I haven't been on Twitch in like over a week, which means that like I can't remember my password. I'll <laughs> try like everything I know. That's fine, you'll have to redeem the password, good lord. <sighs> Happy friggin' birthday, man, jeez. Oh dude. Wait. Processing. Ah, wait. I think I did it. Well, oh, no. Fenrak101 says, it's time for Tom and Cup of Noodles. <laughs> Fenrak is actually an awesome, uh, I, I met him through Twitter, and uh, he's actually quite active on that, and so it's really cool, because oh, yeah. I get to discuss all aspects of everything with him. Okay, hold on, let me, I, okay, I'm now logged in, okay. and the chat, let me see. Am I here? You're allowed to say something lewd, but oh, you are here. Am I here? Yay! Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> in case you were unaware, it is the birthday of the virus named Tom. It's pretty great. I can't believe it's been a year. Yeah, I know. It's, it's kind of mind-boggling. The thing that upsets me the most is, is that like if you had told me it would be a year after we launched and I still wouldn't know like not 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 be like not halfway done with but not even know what my next title was gonna be I would probably freak out 
So that's kind of what that's kind of what kind of gets. I guess that's what gets me the most is that I not only don't I'm not on my way, but uh, I, I have no idea what our next title is going to be. <laughs> well, you've been working on a bunch of YouTube things, right? For the Last Shadow, I believe. Yep. Yep. So we've got three prototypes. Maybe that's part of the problem. Is is that like I'm falling in love with all of my prototypes, and you know I'm supposed to just bang them out real quick. And I'm like, no, let's add networking, or no, let's let's add all these things to it because maybe I'm just delaying things. Uh, but yeah, so there's three of them. There's Chess the Gathering, <laughs> which is the most ridiculously titled prototype ever, which is basically, as it sounds, a mashup of Chess and Magic the Gathering. There's the Last Shadow, uh, which is the action stealth game that only took me four days to prototype and it was already kind of fun and then i spent one more day or maybe a day and a half on the uh versus mode and i played that with a bunch of indies and that was it that was even more fun than the single player game so that game is the most fun for the least amount of effort the kind of return on investment for that thing is insane uh and i kind of want to do some things with it that i probably shouldn't do with it and that's like a that's like a theme I'm going through right now with my design, and uh, and then there is Duskers or Scavenger, which is basically kind of piloting these drones in a derelict spaceship, and it's kind of a ma- it, it kind of is starting to feel like a mashup between a dungeon crawler and a tower defense game, kind of set in space. It's almost like a or maybe I would describe it as a real time strategy game. It's just incredibly inaccessible. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually more, more excited about Duskers, I think, than anything else. It's just it's yep. one of those games that I'm... Eh, it's kind of up my alley, you know? I really liked FTL, games like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely got that kind of, like, rogue... It's definitely got a roguelike slant to it. It definitely has a kind of uh, sort of a real-time strategy, but not... It's really weird. I think I'm going through like this, I keep joking that I'm going through this design adolescence right now, uh, where I'm like raging against the machine and anytime there's a, I am like, anytime there's like a game and there's like a straightforward way that I think I can execute it and I'm like, this would probably work. I refuse to do that. <laughs> I'm like the 13 year old. It's just like, no, I don't want to do it that way. And I'm just going to like rip down the walls and I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's cool because I'm exploring, but I guess there's two sides of my brain. One's a producer and one's a director. Right. And I've kind of bound I've kind of bound and gagged the producer and thrown him into like a closet right now. And the director's just going willy nilly and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I just can't understand how ugh. it's not that I can't understand it, but it seems like there's just so much effort that's Go, what, that you have to involve yourself with to try and figure out what kind of game is really going to come next. I mean, you said yourself, if it's going to take a year from now to figure out, hey, I've got several different prototypes. <laughs> what am I going to do next? All of yeah, them. Yeah, it's kind of it's one of those things where I think, um, uh, let me see, it, it, it's kind of, I, I, there, there are reasons for it. I think I spent the first six months after Tom launched on Tom. Like we did like a, we did an update for the, um, for like the holidays. Cause we were trying, basically what was happening was Tom was selling, but we wanted it to sell better. And Holly and I had used our savings and we didn't have enough money to be like, hey, let's start a second title. And I think what happened understandably, and I told Holly this, but it's hard to argue uh, with your wife when you know, you put all your savings into this thing, you quit your job, like you've had a baby, and like she's, you're forcing her to do all your artwork. <laughs> it's really kind of hard to argue with <laughs> someone in that position. <laughs> right. But I was saying like, yes, we don't have enough money to fund our second title, but the idea is is that like, we'll keep making sales on Tom, and in the meantime, we'll start making the game, and eventually we'll find the money somehow, right? But I think she was more like, no, you, <laughs> you we won't find the money somehow. We'll we'll get that money before we embark on another endeavor like this, right? Right. Uh, so I think what happened was we were just trying really hard. We were like, it's kind of, 
it's kind of, you know, a virus named Tom or Bust. So it was like, all right, how do we get more people to know about this? So I started working, you know, the press and we went to PAX Prime and we just tried to get it out there and tried to let people know that it exists because that's half the battle as an indie. Um, and then, um, you know, and I mean, that worked to a degree. We did pretty decently on various promotions and sales and stuff like that. But, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're eating, you know, that that's not filling back in our savings. That's just making it so that the lights stay on. Uh, so then I think right around, right around crit, after the holiday DLC stuff is the first time that I really started turning my eye toward another project. Um, and that's when we made the deal with Sony to do, to port Tom to Vita. So that's my other excuse. Is yeah, I, I haven't tried it. that yet. How did it come out? Yeah, uh, we're not done. <laughs> So we, that's been, that's gone through some strange things because we were, you know, it, it was it was PlayStation Mobile and now it's looking like it's going to be Vita native and we're actually kind of rewriting we're kind of rewriting Tom and C plus plus right now, um, just because there were just a number of things that were going on. So that ended up that project ended up taking a sidestep and taking a lot longer than we thought it was going to take because we thought we could just you know kind of scoot right over there. Um, but hopefully that'll mean that we can port it to more things. You know, I mean, I love XNA, but you know, it's not exactly portable. We're actually doing <laughs> Mac and Linux. Right. So that's with mono games. So it's like, there's a bunch of ports going on for Virus Name Tom. So that's half of my excuse. And then the other half was that it just took me too long to get on the horse again, because we were, understandably, we were trying to push Tom to, to make it, make more money and that worked. Like it did make more money, but as soon as it makes the money, you know, the money <laughs> goes away. We live in, Maybe we shouldn't live in the Bay Area. Maybe that's half of our problem. It takes a lot of money and time to be able to make these games. I've been involved with various Kickstarters. Like Expeditions Conquistador, Chasm, Shovel Knight, you know, games like that. And it takes a ton of time to be able to do it because you not only have to invest in the game making itself, but you have to talk to the people. It's like PR and, well, <laughs> developing at the same time. I, and I think I think that because of who I am, I think I'm just like a loud, obnoxious sort of person. And I think that what happens is I just get I just get sucked in. Like if I post a video on YouTube and somebody comments on it, I am gonna respond to that comment. And I mean, while that may be cool, it certainly <laughs> distracts me a lot. Like I mean, you know, I love doing it. And I, and then this PR stuff, right? Like Tom turns one, and that's awesome. And so we made this contest, but we have to make all the art assets. Like we have to, uh, you know, start running the contest. I've got to get out there and get the word out and do all this stuff. So there's just a whole lot of hats that I have to wear. Um, and I'm not complaining about them. I mean, I love wearing them, but it's just like, you're right. It just takes so much time. It's kind of amazing to me. Like I joke around that like during my week, I try to schedule like two days of development time and I rarely kind of hit that. And it's just incredibly sad. I think it's, I think I'm probably doing something quite wrong. <laughs> But uh, but it's just like when you have when you're dealing with contracts and then you've got like some PR stuff you got to do and then you've got to deal with you know like I don't know like it, like where does my day go I don't even know. <laughs> it has to be stressful for sure. I wouldn't know the first thing about developing. I really just help people with their you know kickstarters and just really talking to people in general. So I have sort of an idea of how much effort and stress really goes into these kinds of projects. It just, it's baffling to me. And a game like this, I don't, I don't know how well it did. How, how I would did say a virus named Tom do for you? I would say that a virus named Tom, I would call it a success um, because not only am I incredibly proud of it, uh, but it garnered us a lot of uh, acclaim. Um, a lot of people like in a lot of like indie circles and stuff like that like highly regard it which i'm flattered by uh it made us enough money to keep the lights on which i think is something for a first title that is an indie game um that's just definitely not going to happen most times so i'm super thankful for it but when you go from you know when i was working at dreamworks or whatever and i was making you know, like you know a bunch of money uh, and then you quit and you don't make money for like you know, a year or two trying to finish up a game and then it comes out and you're making, like I was making, a, I was I was looking at my taxes and I was like, the first year I made zero, which is tough, right? The oh, second yeah. year I made like, I think I made, wait, what was it? I think I made like 7% of my salary. 
<laughs> oh my god. And then the third year, this year, I'm on track to make about 30% of my salary. Uh, so when it's, I, yeah, it's when getting I, progressively better then. So the, 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 the chart is really nice, right? Like, I mean, that's a great chart. If it kept like that, I'd be very happy. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's not going to keep at that rate. But I mean, so the chart's really good. But then you think about it and over, you know, the course of three years, you know, you're talking about having made, you know, I don't know, like, you know, it's you know zero plus seven plus thirty of like of like you know of those years so that's that's quite a hit plus the fact that yeah things a lot <laughs> sorry I, <laughs> I, it's been such a oh, long you're time getting that, you're getting that bug this is driving me crazy what? I have to, like so see how only half of the screen behind the menu is black oh right yes yeah so Microsoft so that's actually a video that plays, and Microsoft put out an update that makes half the screen not show. Like half of the videos don't render. And at first, like this happened right at the summer sale, and I started freaking out. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, we didn't touch the build. I'm like, how could this have happened? And then all of a sudden, like I started, you know, like other people were like pointing to other games that this was happening in, and Microsoft released like a, secur a security update that basically makes it so that half of videos don't render. Um, so everybody who you know goes out and says, oh my god, like a virus named Tom, one year anniversary, if they download it and they have the latest update, thankfully I did not grab that update and I haven't updated since, though half of their cutscenes will be black. Really? Wow. I, I, you know, <laughs> I really haven't noticed it. Maybe I played it before that problem happened. Yeah, well, I, I think I, well, most people did. Uh, they're saying we're ignoring them in the chat. Yes. Damn not. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the, so the thing that drives me... So there is, you can... We did find a fix, like, or a workaround, which is basically you kind of uninstall, like, one of those files. Uh, but, you know, it's... I just wish they would fix that, because I feel really self-conscious. Like, the gameplay isn't affected, which is really nice. But, I mean, like, I just, I just hate the idea that somebody downloads my video game and goes to play it and like half the video doesn't show up in the intro and they're just like, oh God, you know, like this thing is buggy and doesn't work. Like that just kind of, <laughs> I don't know. That just kind of drives me crazy. Uh, did you ever get a chance to see Indie Game the movie? <laughs> Maybe a lot of people ask you that. I did, yeah. It's awesome. But it also gives you sort of that perspective too, right? Yeah, you know, it's funny. When I was watching Indie Game the movie, um, the first thing I thought of, which I think is just absolutely hilarious and to the point, was is that I shouldn't be here watching this movie, I should be working on my game. <laughs> like, because I was, I was kind of, I, I could relate to where, uh, uh, Phil Fish was, because I was sitting there, I had a wife and a, and a new kid at the time, uh, a daughter, and, you know, I'm taking forever to get this game on, and I needed to make I'm pretty good. That was pretty nice right there. Uh, you know, that's, I, that's oh, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a tw oh god. I, I'm, oh. A tw I'm a Twitch. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I am a, a Twitch gamer. I love games like Gradius and things like that. This game, in playing those titles, it's kind of hard to, to do that and talk at the same time, but yeah. I'm doing alright. Nah, not but, bad. But I, I don't think I could do it. Uh, but, um, but. The, so I was watching the movie and I, I could relate to that because I was like, I haven't finished this game. It's taking me way too long. Uh, I've got to get it done. And here I am, you know, at night, like instead of working on the game, uh, you know, sitting in a movie theater. <laughs> and as crazy, <laughs> as, that, as crazy as that sounds, like that's what I was thinking. And so like when he was like going through his motions of like, I have to get this game out or I will die, you know, like I could kind of relate. Um, then another thing I started thinking about, because I had, at the time, I think my daughter was like, you know, somewhere around, you know, three to six months old or something like that. And I was kind of looking, I was watching them, you know, and of course, you know, they, they have a right to gripe about their life and how difficult it is and stuff like that. But, you know, I was getting all indignant and being like, try that shit, waking up at like two, four, six in the morning, like changing a diaper, getting puked on, you know what I mean? Like. None of those guys had kids. Um, but then I started, I kept watching 
And, you know, you started to see the isolation that, you know, Tommy and Phil and all those guys were kind of going through. Um, and I realized that I didn't have that. Like, at the end of the day, uh, I would go home and my daughter would be there. And if I made a fart noise, she would smile, right? Like, that was it, right? So, like, here's this person that I'm so worried about, like, you know, I, I, what are our sales numbers going to be? Are people going to care about this trailer? All this stuff. And she doesn't give a fuck, right? right? She doesn't care at all if a virus named Tom doesn't sell a single unit and everybody thinks it's crap because I made a fart noise. And that was, the, that was just kind of the thing. Like, I was your dad, right? And, like, that's that. So it, it, it really was grounding in a way. Like, I think, like, as much as I wouldn't exactly say, oh, make an indie game, have a baby. <laughs> um, at the same point in time, you know, it, it was really grounding for me. And I really think that that kind of helped me in a way, even though all the other stuff was incredibly painful. <laughs> I definitely could imagine going through something like that. And with your new projects too, do you find yourself sort of suffering from, I wouldn't even say suffering, but uh, asking yourself the same questions? Asking myself the same questions as this? Well, I mean, the same questions as far as these are still the priorities in my life. And as long as, as long as I'm still making my family happy, I can continue doing what I'm doing without needing to maybe, I'd say, even hang up my, my coat on this whole thing. Because obviously, you don't make nearly as much as an indie developer unless you hit it big. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think that's another thing. Oh. Benrack is making it. You can hit the select button uh, to restart the level. Oh, tr yeah, crap. If you don't want to go back to the stack. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, no, that's the thing. I think that I don't know. I was kind of, I was kind of, even though like I was leaving a really good situation at DreamWorks where I liked the people that I worked with and I found the work fulfilling. I kind of felt good about doing it because I kind of felt that if I became, if I was going to become an indie dev and I was working some crap job. Uh, it might have just been an escape. It might have just been like, well, I hate my job anyway, so I might as well try and be an indie. <laughs> because, I, because I was leaving a, what I felt was a good situation, I felt it was like a good sign that like I just had to do this because I was willing to sacrifice and risk that, you know? I mean, I was leaving a, a good job making animated movies, and I had a kid on the way. It's not like, you know, it's not the greatest excuse to just be like, ho-hum, I think I'm gonna, you know, Go become an independent developer. Uh, so I, I kind of actually, well, I thought that was really dumb, but I <laughs> felt good about it. I felt really good about it because I was like, you know what, this means that this is what I just have to do. Oh, and Shadow, I'm sorry that we ignored you. Shadow523, hello to you. Yeah, Fenrak, of course, dominating the chat and such. I, I ugh, it just, it makes me crazy, Tim. Because you sent me a copy of this game, I'd say four or five months after it came out, after Leviathan had already done a review for it, and I just I played through it. And I remember sitting down one night and just going, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna play it. it. It's an indie game. I can just load it up and play it for a couple of hours, and I'll be good. And I remember like five hours later, I had gotten to the end of the game. And I sent you that email just saying, man, you know, I haven't had a feeling like that in a long time, just being able to sit down and play through something. It's really awesome. And it does pain me seeing all these different developers that get a shot and then sometimes people that just don't even make it. See a game that comes out like this and it doesn't have as much visualization on the market as I would personally like. Right. Yeah, th I think that, I think that's just, I think that's just par for the course in, in being a, a indie game developer. Uh, and I get it. Like, And it, that's why I'm saying like that's half the battle. It's just like I spend so much time on PR and stuff like that now. And I think what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to guard myself against, you know, having to get the right review by press or get the right thing to happen. It's like I'm trying to build awareness of my stuff so that I won't run into the, a case with like like a virus named Tom or like a lot of indie games where like everyone's just like, what? Like haven't heard of it. And, and it's just, it's a hard, 
it's a hard problem to solve. I mean, it's just it's just kind of the nature of the beast. There's just a lot of content. There's a lot of games out there. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what the solution to that is. It, it, the thing that drives me a little bit more crazy was the Metacritic stuff. Like we got like I, I started posting reviews that we got on huh. on this like spreadsheet. And we were getting like our average review, our average is probably around an eight out of 10, right? Like we got some seven out of 10s, we got some 10 out of 10s or whatever, you know? I would say that we were probably sitting around an 8.5 and then over time it went down to an eight. So I would say that our average was somewhere around eight. Okay. And our critic is a 65. Um, and our, but if you go to our user reviews, it's like way higher than that. Um, and that's what was kind of tough. Is it's like, it's one thing if, I make a game and people hate it, right? And I'm like, you know what? I just loved it because it was my game and you know what? It was my first game and maybe I didn't make a game, whatever. Um, and if people loved it, then that's great. But I think the hard thing is when so many people like tell me that they love it and I hate to be jaded, but then it just kind of like, I'm just kind of like, yeah, well, it's got, you know, like how does, you know, how does it not sell better than it is right now? And how does it not have a better Metacritic rating? And I think what it is, is that like, I think a lot of, and I hate to be like this, but I think a lot of the bigger sites, um, they have to sit there and they have to say, hey, like I got a great review on, on one site that was a larger site. And then he ended up giving me like a seven out of 10, which isn't a horrible score, but the review was glowing. And the guy was in the first comment underneath, it was like, well, why did it get a seven out of 10? And I think what it is, is they say, hey, I just played this really high production value game, right? Like, and I gave it an, a nine, or let's say I gave it an eight. How can I give this game, this production value so much less um, that doesn't have networking, uh, despite being a co-op game, you know, claim like, you know, multiplayer type game. Uh, how can I give that that highest score? And I think that, I don't think it's the fault of the reviewers necessarily, but I think it's just, I don't know. It's just a rough system. <laughs> it's a tough call. I mean, every website, they run things a little bit differently, as you know. Uh, to me, I always run off of five as being a, com a completely mediocre, very moderate game. And people dish out way too many tens, nines, eights, in my opinion. You gotta think, you know, a ten is, if we're talking semantics here, a ten is a perfect game, right? It's yeah, something that's right. just gonna be awesome, just overall. So, yeah. why are all these games like always getting it? Like, for instance, oh, I'll just throw one out there. Like, uh, can't really compare it to your game, but like Skyrim, right? Games right. of the Year awards, you know, ten out of tens. So I play this game. It's great. It's an awesome game. There's no possible way in my mind it's a ten. It's great because you're able to mod and it's got such an expansive world, but. It's sort of the same thing to me. I'm not the biggest Elder Scrolls fan. I think it's all right, but you have to judge games on a different level, you know? Like, yeah. I'm not gonna say, I'm gonna give this game a 10 because in the future, dude, the mods are gonna be out of this world. No, it's not like that. And they can take, they can take a game like that and be fine. It's Bethesda, right? They make millions and millions of bucks. But for somebody like you, I ran into this issue a long time ago with Arkham Games. You come out with something like a virus named Tom. When you get an IGN or a GameSpot to review your, your title, you're relying on that score. Like Sometimes they're not even going to look at your game because there's millions of stuff that's out there right now. When they give that game a 4, 5, you know, a 6, whatever, and they just kind of shovel it off to the side, people just look at that and go, ah, whatever, that's it. That was your chance to really gain a bunch of views, some potential fans, purchases even. So, to me, that's what really hurts, because indie games, indie developers, rather, are relying on those higher profile websites to get them the exposure that they need to survive. And so, I've been talking, I've been talking to a bunch of indies lately, and I think that there's this I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing or what it is, but it's definitely a thing. <laughs> but but there's definitely a, a, a vibe out there that they are less dependent upon big press, right? <laughs> right. Like, there's definitely that vibe going on right now because, I mean, I talked to 
uh, like David Rosen over at Wolfire, right? Um, and he has a crazy, amazing following. Um, and they are, they're always saying that if they get picked up by a Let's Play or a, a YouTube personality or something like that, then that drives sales. And they say that when they get some, you know, press on some mainstream site, they don't really see much out of that. So now it could be the fact that the games and the game makers that we're talking about are quite different, right? Um, this is actually probably the hardest puzzle level, just so that you know. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely heinous. I remember getting to the end here and just going, all right, all right, I can bring it down to just one, and yeah. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> you know what? It's I kind of, <laughs> I watch people play, and I and then they talk about playing and stuff, and I realize what a complete prick I am, because <laughs> it's like, I designed this level like so that there would that would happen so that you would get it so that there was one piece that wasn't <laughs> i did that and like i thought when i was doing that that was a cool thing to do and then i watched people and i'm like i am a complete asshole like <laughs> this poor bastard and now it's just like three over there you know and it's just like and then it never helps when i laugh during it right like when they're playing and i laugh about that and they look over at me and i'm like Probably not a good time. I don't to know, laugh. That's when it's the best. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I had time. You know, I had certainly. It, it actually is kind of gratifying because most of the levels in this game you can play through quickly, and you know, and everybody always talks about how how many gameplay hours the game has and stuff like that. So I'm just like, this this one's a big f you to the gameplay hours, people. <laughs> this is like, you know what? You can blitz through this game. Spend, spend 45 minutes on this one damn level and then, you know, then you can say that you couldn't. But, but some people, man, they, they've they done like, you know, speed runs of this and they've gotten it, they've gotten it pretty down. It's pretty amazing. We had some, we had like a, we had like a video contest back in the day. Like, I, like we had this video hall of fame. We, I guess we still have it. But uh, people, I, I picked like, I think this was actually during the beta. I, no. I think this is right after launch. I picked like four levels or five levels or something like that. And I would, I, oh, this was during the beta because if you won, you would get your name in that baked in high scores. Okay. Uh, and man, the videos people were sending in, holy crap. They were like, it was that stuff where you're shaving seconds off because you took a different route. Right. You know, to do it and stuff like that. And like, and some of these guys, like with the, um, with like energy stealing and dodging and stuff like that. It was crazy. Like Brandon, who uh, actually helps us a lot now, he started off being a fan and he became basically a member of the team. Like he would do all these cool tricks that I thought were awesome. Like he'd glitch a drone and then as a drone was going by, he you know you know how you bounce off glitch drones? Yes. So he would glitch a drone and then he would stand above it and then when another drone was coming by, he would go down, steal the energy off the front, bounce off the glitch drone and then steal the energy off the back of the drone that was going by. What? It was like, it was Fine. like, it was like parkour, man. It was just like, holy crap, that's cool. I would like, I would like put, I, I think I put one of those in like the trailer or something. No, maybe not the trailer, but like, yeah, it's just like, it's really, that's really cool when you see people playing and you're like, wow, these people are better at my game than me, despite how many hours I've put into this damn thing. Well, they're crazy. I mean, you've seen some of the people out there and doing what they do. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you're not gonna, like, I told Holly, I was like, you know, I was like, how long do you think that, because, you know, I had all the high scores. <laughs> like, how long do you think it's gonna be? How long do you think that's gonna last? And then Brandon, who was, like, playtesting the game for me, was, like, just, like, beating all my high scores, and I was like, damn it, I hired the wrong people. Ugh, oh, I'm right there. I know there's just a couple moves that I need to make. You know what's funny is I come back to some of these, uh, like I'll come back to the game because we're doing, you know, an event or we're doing something. And some of the levels, like I can't remember how to, like there's, you there's can't one- can't remember? Two, oh my uh, God. <laughs> there's one or two that like, I can't remember for some reason. And when I see them, I'm like, oh, this is the one I can't remember. I remember that I can't remember it, but I can't remember. <laughs> And so, like, I, I'm like, I'm like trying to give hints. This is this is my excuse right now to you as to why I'm not giving hints. You are super close right now. Oh, I know. I always get it to around like this point. So, right. you know, I can, for instance, 
What I usually do with most of the puzzles and how I was able to solve most of them without much of a problem, I'd, I'd build off of a direction. Like, I know, all right, right, so this is a dead end. Obviously, like, over here. All right, you know, what do we need to do? These these things, the end caps, we'll just call them, they need to get energy from somewhere. And they're divided, but there's a few things that I could do. All right, so that's usually where I try to start. But, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think this is why, like, I think honestly right now, if I took over, like, I don't really, because at first I was like, oh, you just switch that end piece around, and then the other one that's going off the side, and I'm like, no, that's all connected. Um, but it's really funny. I can understand why I think a lot of Let's Players, uh, which I think is driving a lot of traffic to games right now, um, avoid puzzle games. Because I think what happens is, is it's a lot like why no one will play me in chess. Like, everybody assumes that, like, if you lose in chess, that means you're dumb, and that's not true. Or they they, they, they think that it, if you lose in chess, then you are less intelligent than the person that you lost to. Right. Which is complete crap. Which is terrible. That's, yeah, that's why, terrible. Everybody has this thing, so it's like I, it's like it's hard to get a chess game going a lot of times. So I think it's the same thing with less players. Um, uh, the uh, oh, is this? Did you did we play in chess the gathering? Shadow five two three. The uh, because chess the gathering yeah great name yeah it, i was able to play uh, oh all right so we've played chess the gathering together M me and shadow reaper here uh but so the thing is is that like uh, i think a lot of let's players won't won't play puzzle games because they feel that everybody on the other on the you know that's not because it's hard to talk and play and then in addition to that then they're not solving the puzzle fast enough and so everyone's like you idiot you know? uh, right. I mean, but, but like here, you know, for instance, we're, it's more of just like the conversation and sort of showing off the game and how difficult it can be because that's kind of what you want from a puzzle game, is it not? Right. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, if so, this was what was really funny when we first started playtesting this game. Is is it like uh, people would come in and they would play, and I would feel like kind of crappy no matter what because if they solve like these puzzles right away. I'd be like, oh god, like that took some effort to make that puzzle and, and they just breezed through it, that sucks. But then all of a sudden when they couldn't solve it, then I'd feel really guilty. Because I think you're trained in games or there's so many things when you're designing a game that people stumble on that are purely UI elements, you know what I mean? Like sure. they just don't understand how to play it and you see that as a failing if they can't play it right. Um, and so then all of a sudden you get to these puzzles and you're so indoctrinated with if they're doing something wrong, it's my fault, that if they can't solve the puzzles, you start feeling really guilty because you feel bad for them because they're getting frustrated and you felt like you made a crappy game. You know what I mean? So there's kind of like, there's kind of like a big lose-lose there. Uh, so, speaking, I don't know. Yeah, speaking of losing, yeah. There goes that. We'll, we'll go to a different place. <laughs> I, rem I remember I left that one there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. I see that. I see that there were a couple here. This, um, the, 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 that one, the second to last one is just oh, that was no. just me. I don't even. I didn't even. I wasn't gonna put that one in the game. Um. So what happened was, is it's just this really mean level. Uh, and I had it in there because I just wanted like a, like a super difficult level. And um, Brandon, who was basically doing our QA at the time, uh, he and his wife would play a ton. Him and Selena would play a ton of all the co-op levels. And they were, when you're an indie, we don't have a team. Like I don't have like four people in an office that can play multiplayer, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, I was relying on those two. It was me and those two, it was me with like my my left and right hand controlling the bombs, and it was those two, and they played through the whole thing, and they got to that level, and Brandon hated it, and he was like, "You need to cut this from the game." Or actually, this is in single player. And then Selena went through the campaign, his wife, and she really liked that one because it just worked with her brain, and that's all the justification I needed. Like I was gonna totally take it out, and then as soon as she was like, "Don't take that one out," I was like, "Okay." Cause it's like it's almost like I just needed an excuse to like be a complete jerk to the player, <laughs> and she totally provided it. So I'm gonna completely blame her for the second to last level of our team song. <laughs> I think that's a pretty interesting story because you always you always get you always get those levels or those one little things before you have to actually ship the game or you know put it on Steam or whatever, and you're just not sure, so you have to get that insight 
it's like posting a review for me, like some of my peers at the office. I'm just like, all right, what do you what do you guys think of this part of the review? Is it too controversial? Uh, what do you think? No, 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 right. man, just leave it, just leave it. Right, but, but you just need that one person, because even if everyone said, cut that out, cut that out, cut that out, and then one person was just like, no, it's fine, then you're, that's like, <laughs> That's what you were looking for. You were just looking for affirmation, right? Right, you're just, yeah. You're just like, I just need someone else to say that it's fine and I'm gonna do it. <laughs> By the way, I, I just, I cannot get enough of the music. I end up getting the, the soundtrack too. Like this song that's playing right now is my favorite. Hold on, let me see if I can thank a, it. a really good job. Hold on, let me see if I can I think it's, it's I think it's called Bad Voca. Yeah, dude, people love them some bad vocal. And uh, yeah. and so Ian Hicks, this is random. I was at a Google event, okay? I don't, I brought down, at the beginning when I was making a virus named Tom, I kind of didn't, well, I still kind of don't know what I was, I'm doing. But I went to this Google event, and I was the only person there with like a PC game. Like everybody else there was mobile social, right? And everybody was just kind of staring at me like, does this run on... Does this run on Android? And I'm like, no, just because the because I was just like, well, the events it <laughs> that doesn't mean everything has to be running on Google, like you know, on Android. Uh, but so I randomly met Ian there. I don't really know why the heck he was there. I don't know why I was there, but he was just like, oh yeah, I do music or whatever, you know. And you meet people all the time. That oh are like, sure, right, right, yeah. That. I'm just like, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. And then um, and then we ended up emailing. And I was like, all right, well, could you, because I had a guy doing some sound and of some music for me, but he was kind of bailing on me. And I was like, all right, like, let's see what you got. And he started, he gave me a couple tracks and I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, like how much money do, can I even afford you? Because like this stuff is awesome. And he just kept cranking on him. And so what happened was, is that we were near the end and I started dividing the tracks up by type, right? Like, I mean, I didn't want a fast song playing during a puzzle, a pure yep. puzzle. I didn't want a slow song during a hectic, like, you know, Twitch level. Um, and we needed a few more tracks because I felt like there weren't enough. Um, and he made bad bokeh. And it was really funny because at first I'm like, what is this? You're just talking into a microphone and you're repeating it, aren't you? And, uh... <laughs> But it was it was really catchy, and then he did like another pass of it, and I was like, "This is really good." And then like, and I swear, like whenever the soundtrack comes up, because a ton of people mention the soundtrack, it makes me almost self conscious of like other areas of the game. But uh, but everyone loves the Bad Boca, even even when you've got the um, you know that dubstep track that he made for the trailer and stuff like that. Like people love Bad Boca. It's a it's a really solid track. I really like one of the first ones that he made um, that I'm stumbling on the name for right now. I think in the soundtrack, it's like, you know, fourth or fifth track or something like that. It's like, a, but it's funny, man. Like, I mean, there wasn't, there's not a track in there that I'm like, uh, you know, like, except for that one. They're all solid. All right. So what do you think? I, th I believe that I've sectioned them all off. That's always been my secret for this one. I, I just remembered. Don't want any of them to touch the red, obviously. Down here will be a problem, and then up here will be a problem. So I just, uh, I don't know if it'll get there in time. It depends on which square that you light up, because based on the movement of the drones, right. it'll light up a different square. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to do the, the furthest one to the right. Oh man. <laughs> what I did, was I made it that you had to count out the number to each connected. Cause you really were evil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the magic number is seven. I think if it's seven away, if they're all seven away, then it works. I think. Oh uh, god. I don't know. All right, we're we're gonna see. Cause I'm I'm low. That that's the thing is, is you just get you uh, just get. You're like I gotta do nope, it. Nope. Nope. Didn't do it. I'm scared. I don't think that's good. <laughs> I oh, think well. the one that I always light up is that is that square one. Yeah, I'll see you again. So how long did it actually take you to make this game? Just from scratch? From scratch? Yeah. Uh, well, are we talking... So it gets a little confusing. Because the, 
A total? Probably about like three to four years. Really? Uh, because the first two years, the first two to two and a half years I spent on this, I was working part time on it, like, you know, nights and weekends. So it was probably about like maybe maybe five to ten hours a week when I could fit it in. Um, and then in 2011, right in January, I quit my job and we got the game out a year and a half after that. So I think if it had been if I had been working straight through, it probably would have been two and a half years. I, I want to say that most people that would be in your situation, not to go back to the whole job thing, but. Most people in your situation would never take that opportunity to go indie. You know, yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. I mean, why did, why did you just why did you decide to? It, it, was it just like a life goal of yours? I just I find it so interesting. The, so basically, I was in so I was in games before. Uh, I had gone in and done console games. I worked at a company called Rainbow Studios that was in Phoenix. We put out we put out ATV Off Road Fury and Flash Down and. Stuff like that, um, and I left because I burnt out. Like they worked me to death. I liked the people there, but man, the hours were just horrible. And I think that's just the game industry. It's just horrible. Burn people out, and then get you know fresh blood in when people burn out. So I burnt out pretty quick. After like two years of doing that, I was like, I'm done with this. And that, and then I decided I'd do film because I always liked computer graphics. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to do either film or games, and games, just the industry didn't feel mature enough to me. Like, I was like, at some point, I'm gonna want a life, and I can't just sit here uh, all the time. And actually, special effects is kind of just as bad. Um, luckily, at DreamWorks, because they control the whole process with the anim with an, an animated movie, um, it's kind of a bastion. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of this, you know, this wonderful island amidst a sea of crap. <laughs> I, I literally was working, you know, 40, 50 hours a week, like not pulling in any overtime, you know? Um, it was a great, great gig. But then I think what happened is, is like, I worked there for eight years um, and it was really great. But what would happen is, is like, I had creative control over something like, how does the, how does this fire look in this shot? Like, how did, when dragons breathe fire, like, how does that look? Or when it catches on things for this movie, because each movie has its own art direction. You would think right. fire is fire, but we actually, you know, we make it look different for each movie. And, uh, but, but I kind of wanted to be like, well, why is this character doing this? And why are we even talking about these characters? And I always wanted that. So I started writing. Um, uh, and then I basically, like, I wasn't getting, I, I think my creative, I was, I was just pent up creatively, and I really wanted to have more of a say in things. And I always loved games, and I, I, I you know, I designed a few board games, and uh, I always, you know, played video games and talked about redesigning them and doing different things with them and stuff like that. And then when XNA came out, and I realized that you could use a developer kit, like you could use a retail Xbox to develop on. I was just like, sign me up with a with like a free tool. So, uh, so that's when I started, well, I, we started a couple different projects that were more ambitious and of course failed uh, due to, you know, team and all, all sorts of stuff. And then, uh, and, then, and then at some point I just got sick of it all and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make, I'm just going to complete a damn game. And at the time I was like, you know what, we, we had been working on one idea for this really interesting game that happened to be a connection, you know, like like circuits and pipes and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? It was 3D and it had all this stuff going on. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make a pipe game. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to make a simple pipe game and I'm going to release it. And of, of course, right? Uh, and then I couldn't help. Uh, what movies did I work on? Uh, real quick. Uh, Shrek 2, Over the Hedge, Madagascar, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, Megamind, uh, I'm probably missing one or two. Flushed away. Basically, some anything DreamWorks came out between Shrek 2 and Mega Man. <laughs> when you did pitch some of those questions, like, you know, what the hell is this character doing? That's that's dumb. Or you wouldn't obviously say that, but was there anyone that you could talk to that would actually listen to you, or would it just you'd just get brushed off? Um. Yeah, no, they actually, what's amazing about animated film is it's so different than live action. In live action, the, the movie's already kind of made, and you're, like, I was an effects 
artist. Um, so you know, you know, water and fire and stuff like that. Uh, and so what would happen is, is that you they'd come in, like in, in the in live action, it'd just be like, okay, here's a scene, make this car blow up. You know what I mean? And like you have, you don't really have context. You don't even know other parts of the movie. You know, it's like it's very segmented off. And in animation, or at least where the way we did animation, is we knew everybody. So like you knew the guy who was modeling and texturing and doing all this stuff. And the movies took a long time. God, oh, jeez, dude. <laughs> I'm totally blaming Selena for this one. <laughs> but so so the the movies take a long time to make. So what happens? Is, is that as a director, you don't just come in, flash in the pan, you know, like film it all, and then, you know, it'll get handled in post. Like, you're on that picture for like four years, maybe five, you know what I mean? So you gotta, and, and so many things are gonna change, and you're relying so much on everyone in that studio, that there can be, it kind of allows for less ego in a way, right? Because it's like, you everybody's gotta kind of work with you. Uh, so, it's one of those things where the directors actually would listen if you had, and you actually could talk to the director. Huh. Which is kind of not something you can do on a live action set. You can't just like walk up and be like, oh, hey, I've got an idea. Um, so that was kind of cool. I mean, a lot of times they wouldn't take it, but they would have screenings where, where the crew would, you know, make comments and stuff like that. And I saw them make adjustments. I remember on, um, I remember on Shrek 2 originally, um, Puss in Boots, like, didn't stop and, like, start sword fighting with those guys. Um, I'm, I'm gonna talk about these movies as if you've watched them a million times, because I, I have, so. Uh, but, but, the, you know, things like that, that scene wasn't in there, and everybody was like, we wanted, they wanted to see Puss, you know, like, he's had this damn sword that he's carrying around the whole time, and they wanted to see him use it, so, you know, they acquiesced to that. And there was a couple huh. other, you know, there, there are other things where they would ask opinions on things, and they would take those opinions. Um, so, yeah, so it wasn't, I don't even know what the heck we were talking about. <laughs> oh, we were just talking about just, if you were able to make suggestions just in any kind of set and would they give you the cold shoulder or not, which you pretty right, much yeah. answered anyway. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they will, they will to a certain degree, but they'll be nice about it in animation. They'll be like, that's a good suggestion, and they'll pretend to write it down. Uh, oh, wow. In, in, in live action, I feel like, who is this guy? Get him off my set, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I get it to an extent, but, I mean, hey, if it's a good idea, then utilize it. Right, yeah. yeah. By, by the way, I, I'd like to brag just for a minute. I probably can't pull it up just because it's actually on my Steam itself, but I have an achievement that is, I guess, got... po point zero eight seven percent of the world have it. And that's, I got that chain combo, like that 20 combo thing. Oh, did you really? I did, yeah, I, I got that one. And I, Did you do I, it on that level with the, uh, where there's just like a ton of them and they're moving slowly, the one you were playing before? Uh, no, not the one that I've played here. Maybe I, I can try and find it. Good Lord, this one is just a memorization festival. I better not do this one right now. Yeah, this one's gonna break your brain while you're, while, while you're talking, but there's there's one that there's one that Brandon came up with that I wasn't gonna put in the game, uh, but I, I I kind of acquiesced to him. Uh, the there there's one about you know how you can get so many orbiting you at once. Like you can get if you, you when when you grab an energy pellet it orbits around you. Yes. Gr when you grab a second one it the first one hasn't if you haven't absorbed it yet there are two spinning around you. So he started figuring out how to do these things and he got three and then he got, I think he got four and I think that became an achievement and then I think he got five. And I was like, I'm not putting that in as an achievement. And he, I refused to put in anything <laughs> that I could not do. <laughs> I was like, if I can't do it, oh, I'm man, proud I, I, something in, as an achievement that I can't do. It was a level that looked a lot like this. But this isn't the one, obviously. I totally, I totally broke the game on this one. Um, up until this level, I think, like the world is cohesive, uh, and in that world, in that level, they don't have uh, energy pellets on them, uh, which kind of, which kind of breaks the world a little bit. But I like that level so much. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
screw it. No one's no one's gonna notice. Oh man! So yeah, you can see it right now. This level gave me such a headache, but I loved it. This this was the level where I stopped and I sent you that email. Oh really? After I after I finished it, because for the longest time, I'd get to the point where I just I wasn't sure where to go. Because you can choose to have them go in the middle, or you could branch them out, but there's a specific right. way, obviously, to do it. It's a puzzle. I mean, come on. But after I did it, it was one of those eureka moments. Yeah, that, so that's what I hoped. I hoped with a lot of these levels. I think the first one that I really hoped that would happen was, like, uh, uh, two points, either eight or nine. Uh, the one with the... The one with the two, where you have to create two energy sources. Oh, uh, right, yes, oh my god. That was the first one that I was like, this one is gonna have a eureka moment, and people are either gonna, people are either gonna put down the controller, <laughs> or they are gonna keep, or they are gonna like buy this game, like with this level. And I didn't have it in the demo, um, but I felt like that was it. I felt like that was, what I was, tr I was trying to do that, I was trying to emulate, I was trying to channel braid or, or what have you, where you have those moments where you're like, oh, I get it, right? Like that aha moment. Um, and so when people tell me about those, I get really happy because I felt like the hardest thing to do, I think, in a game is the, the is like the first third, because that's when people are going to decide if they like your game or not, right? right? So you don't want to make it too difficult. Because there are a lot of people that will just put it down and be like, screw this. And you don't want to make it too easy because there are a lot of people that won't, like people would just look at this and be like, oh, it's a pipe game, right? It's just a pipe game. Um, if I made it too easy. So you're really in this tough spot. Um, you're pretty good at stacking those glitches, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta rock out the, um, you gotta, the, those, I like, see, I like levels like this where I could start to play with things a little bit deeper like right. here obviously the two the four corners are safe and then you can create gaps uh with glitches but they're specific places right and it's there's like, only one place that you can start the energy and that's another graph the gap that you will create right I, yeah so, i don't think it was this one that i got because that's the one that's what i'm looking for right now i'll keep this one in mind oh you're talking about the 20 chain yeah well that's what fenrak wanted me to try and find yeah i, I I'm really, I'm really surprised that it's not that one that is full of drones, but they're kind of slow moving and they're indestructible. Do you remember which one that, which stage that's on? Yeah, if you go back, um, I think that that's like four point. It's in, it's in four, I think. So you're in five, right? I'm sorry, I think of things in. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah, in the hollow suit. And then I think it's his, I think it's his like right or left leg. I think it's, his, I think it's, his, it's, it's, it's the left leg, the thigh, I think. All right, let's, let's check it out. Definitely not that one. We tried that already. Go, go. Yeah, this one. I think it's this one. This one. Ah. No, 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 no. It's, sorry, it's the foot. The one you were just on. The last level that you were on, I think that's the one I was No, the, I, I can tell you for certain this was not the one that I got it on. I know for a fact I didn't get it on here. Oh really? Yep. Huh. It's probably this is possible. This one that I would expect it because like you can do some crazy stealing in that one because it's like a confined space so you can you can go through it. Um, there are some later levels where there's just a ton of drones in a row and you might have been able to do it on that. Oh, this one sucks. Oh. You see, this, so this one. This one, it was amazing to me because I didn't, I thought that this one wasn't that hard. And then I realized that because I knew the solution, I realized that you don't turn any of the mystery tiles. Like it's all just turning those, the, the ones adjacent to the red. Um, and so that makes it a lot easier <laughs> when you know that. I, or, I had no oh, idea. You can actually do that? Are you serious? Yeah. What? Yeah, like right now, right, yeah, right. just Let's only see. turn those ones. Only turn All the right. ones adjacent to the red. The ones oh, that, goodness, that I'm an idiot. The non-encrypted non tiles, only turn those. Oops. Yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> that happens to be all the time, you know, like just brain right. farts. Okay. 
So yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't remember exactly. But okay, so it'll shoot around. Obviously, probably not gonna work. But we'll keep going with it. All right, yeah. so that's not gonna. Work. Yeah, probably. So, that's probably not rotate, gonna work. Yeah, rotate the source now. Yeah, let's see. Or, or you might be. You might be. It looks like it almost has to be like this. That's what I mean. Like. It, yeah, rotate the source like two more times. Okay. All right. Oh, it's no. hard because I'm watching a delayed probably with this. Right, well, it's delayed like four seconds. Okay, okay so here we go, ready? Yeah. So we're doing good. So now what you do, yeah, disconnect that one. Uh, Not yet, uh, yeah, I think that the one on the bottom. This one, you think? No. No, not that one. Down below, that one. Oh, goodness. So now, that'll disconnect, and now you gotta reconnect the other one with. You see how there's a dead end on the left? Yeah. So connect those, that one to the bottom left corner, I think. Maybe. <laughs> Alright, so not not so. No, that way, and then, yeah, and then flip the other one around. Oh, uh, right, okay, alright. So, let's see. So if, you flip, okay. if we flip this one up, then. That won't work. Yeah, but you can you the, the the thing is is that you don't need to move any of the non-adjacent pieces. Right. I know it's just these. And that one, that one to the left is hard because there's a delay. But that one, I, I'm pretty sure you, you have to you have to connect that one to the bottom right, and then it'll start going. But be careful because some of them are hooked up to red. So if if energy flows through them, it'll be bad. Right. <laughs> Well, I did beat this one, obviously. I just... Uh, this is what's great, though. It, it, you have to use your mind. You have to actually think. It's it's pretty cool. I just... I love stuff like this. All right, let me Thanks. reset. Um, but what was funny to me about this level is that everyone complained about this level, and I was confused about it until I watched them play. And they'd start turning all the mystery tiles, and, and I mean, the encrypted tiles, and of course they would, right? Why would they not? Yeah. And, and I... I didn't think about that as like a possibility, like because I had played it so many times that I had, I almost treated those things like they were locked, but I didn't lock them. And that's actually one thing. That's actually one thing that I I kind of feel bad about is is that like or not feel bad about, but I'm kind of bummed about. It was pure in a way that you couldn't have a tile of two types, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, you couldn't have it like like it couldn't be encrypted and locked. Right, um, it can only be one or the other. So if I could have locked them all, I would have. But I made it so that you could only have one. <laughs> all right. So you personally think that the bottom left-hand corner needs to be attached to the one right above it? No, so this. So what it might be is, is it might be that the source. Maybe. It might be that the source needs to be rotated. Yeah. Yeah, like that. So now. Take that one on the on the bottom. Disconnect those two. Yeah. Let's, let's, oh goodness! I'm an idiot. Ah! I don't know <laughs> if this will work, but I feel like it will. Yeah, let's, let's give it a try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's really funny because sometimes when I'm at home, I'll <laughs> my roommate, you'll just hear a scream of agony, and you know, just sort of like that. And I'm just like, dude, what happened? I was like, I died, man. And then I'll just leave because he's mad. <laughs> All right. So let's turn these. All right, do that one more time. Do that one so it goes. Do that one that you were just messing with so it goes down. There you go. That's good. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right. We're almost there. Rocking. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa well, is right. So we're, we're looking okay. That one's down. Uh. I think, I think we're gonna have to mess with the source again. No, no, I, that one that you're on right now, they, like, they break that connection. I am. Oh, oh, oh! Hey! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And see, that, that's the great part about this game, just experimentation and right. just going through. <laughs> Well, I think what's cool, what was actually when designing this game, one of the things that made it easier to design is that it's discrete, right? 
Like, yeah. making a game like Skyrim blows my mind because, like, you, you're sitting there and somebody has a bug and it's, like, you know, two hours in and it's just like, what? Right? So, like, with this game, I could easily take a level and take it out and put in a new one. Or if it was broken, I could fix it. Like, just that one level, right? It's, it's oh, like, right, right, yeah. They are all depending on each other because you have to learn how, like, you have to learn the mechanic for a kill, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, and what, what, what is it, what is an encrypted tile? What is an indestructible drone? Like, you have to learn these things first. Um, but at the same point in time, like, because, you know, there's, whatever, 54 discrete elements, you can kind of tweak those, as it were, um, which is kind of fun. Um, or at least at least made made life a little bit easier. I want to say that it really it could be this level. Uh, maybe maybe not. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but I, I, I really couldn't believe that. I just got it, you know, nonchalantly. I I, I never really looked through achievements just because. Yeah, I, I I like playing through a game, and if it accidentally happens, then awesome. <laughs> And then after I'm done with it, maybe I'll look and go, oh, okay. So I had gotten to a point where it's just like, well, you know what, let's just see what the achievements are because there's like 50 bazillion. Because this game, believe it or not, is a ton of fun to play in cooperative mode. I just wish you could do it over the internet. Yeah. We we kept, so there's another guy that came on that's been helping us a little bit with developing on the prototypes. Uh, and he keeps saying, he's just like, everyone... I have a lot of developers that are like willing to jump on and just add networking to this game. And we talked about kickstarting it. Um, originally, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna kickstart the, 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 I felt like what was holding this game back was the fact that nobody was playing, there's only like 6% or something like that that have even played the, the co-op campaign at all. Like even like a, like a couple levels. Um, and I felt like this game, the, I feel the co-op in this game is great. Uh, and so it, that's what was holding it back was that it didn't have networking and a whole lot of people were like Developers and stuff like that were like I will help you with that and all this stuff, but Anybody that had any experience with networking um, Would say that it's gonna take us like at least you know three to four months to get that in um, Not that it'll take three or four months to get networking in but it'll take like, you know a month to get networking in but then there'll be all these edge cases and there'll be latency issues and you know, race conditions and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, see this, this half screen thing drives me crazy. Yeah, I've never but, seen um, that. But the uh, so the um, but yeah, and that's the thing is, is that I want to really do that. But it's just it's always a question, right? It's like, should we spend four months doing that, or should we spend four months developing another title, or should we spend four months like doing this other thing, and where's the money going to come from, and all that kind of stuff? And like, I don't know. I felt like. Like, our community was behind us, and they were like, we will kickstart this thing, right? But I felt like, I felt like I was gonna be sitting there with a Kickstarter campaign, and someone was gonna watch a video that was like some destitute indie that was like, if you allow, if you give us like $5,000, we can make our dream game. Oh my God. And then I was, gonna, and I was gonna come on and be like, so we already made a game, and it's already on Steam, but if you guys give us like 40 grand, then we could uh, add, add a feature to it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I cool, just felt cool like hats, I was... man. <laughs> What's that? I said cool hats. We'll add like an, an awesome hat and a cape. You know? I mean, and don't get me wrong. Like the whole thing, the game, the the, the it's it's all about uh, the co-op, and I think those levels are great, and that gameplay is amazing. But like, I just didn't feel like I could do that. I am. I think I have an irrational fear of Kickstarter. I think I fear that. It'll take a whole month for me to do a campaign, and then if it fails, that's a bunch of that's wasted. And if it succeeds, then I probably put the amount that I need way lower than I really need it, and now I'm beholden. I so I have, it, I'm it, it. don't mean to interrupt you here, but you just brought this to my attention. And you know, being a developer, you're an integral part for me keeping my job too. You know, just talking to you guys, trying to suss out you know, all the Kickstarter stuff and really just to expose games. You know, that's, that's really what my job is about. And I, I remember speaking to... Uh, damn it, what is her name? Uh, God. What game? Uh, a lot of old school... They had, they had a game on Kickstarter called... Oh, damn it! How do I not, how do I not remember this? I gotta check my LinkedIn uh, profile because I'm... 
I'm actually yeah. I'm linked in with a couple of those guys. But in any case, it'll come to me in just a minute. But they're these renowned people who wanted like a half a million and a half bucks or something like that for a Kickstarter game. And it seemed completely ridiculous because the game didn't even have a name during their Kickstarter campaign. Right. And I mean, these guys were just trying to go off of fame alone, which actually right. sort of bothered me in a way, because you don't, you can't just use that and think that people are going to completely throw money at it, because I, right. I think it ruins what Kickstarter kind of stands for, which I think is more of an indie format. And, right. I, and I think that people do get confused what indie actually means. There's a difference between you, indie, and Supergiant Games, indie. Right. Yeah. That, that makes sense to you, doesn't it? It does. I mean, Greg and those guys, I mean, they, they, they're not huge or anything like that, but compared to me, they are. And then compared to them, Double Fine is huge. You know what I mean? Like, yes. there's kind of these, like, striations in indie. Um, and we are certainly, I think, on that, depending on how you look at it, either that bottom rung or that pinnacle of indie, where it's like myself and my wife, and we hire on contractors to help us get it done, like Ian and stuff like that. Um, and, and, and get people that are just awesome, like Brendan, who originally just bought the game and then he turned into like an integral part of the team. So, but yeah. Shaker, that's what it was. They changed it to Shaker in old, it was just entitled Old School RPG. It was uh, Brenda Romar, Romero, or at that point, it was oh, Brenda okay. Brathwaite and right. Tom Hall. Right. Yeah, those guys. It, the thing, so that, I gotta admit, like, I love the Double Fine guys, but when I saw that was the Chalice one or whatever, mm. it was like the, the description, uh, the description of the game, you know, on a whiteboard. Um, I mean, I get it. Like, I think that at a certain point, it's like you trust people, if that's if that makes sense. Like, right now, um, like, I would say that Christopher Nolan has earned my trust. So, like, when, like, we're, like, you know, if, if there's a movie out there, like, his Superman movie, right? Didn't he do that? Um, I haven't seen it, and I probably I, haven't, I haven't heard, either. I haven't heard great things, but because, like, he's got such a great success record with, for me, with Memento, and the Batman series, and, and... You know, I'm like, okay, I will go see that. Whereas, like, Tim Burton has burned all of his bridges with me. Right? Like, it used to be that I would go see his movies, and now I'm like, oh, I avoid them. So it's like, I get that you trust, and I think you should. Like, I mean, I would hope that to a certain degree, like, I don't start at ground zero with people who love the virus and Tom. However, for me to now sit here and say, hey, I'm going to pitch a game to you, it's a tower defense game. You know what I mean? Or, like, you know, it's, it's, it's got a mixture of things. And there was like, you know, this, that, and the other thing in it. You know, I, I feel like I do, I'm kind of with you on that. That it kind of, I, I feel like, I feel like you can trust in somebody for like the details and, you know, that they will bring this thing to completion. There's another thing to just be like, you know, I'm going to write you a check because you said you're going to make a game in space. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, Kickstarter is its own ecosystem and I certainly do not completely understand it and I fear it <laughs> well I mean what, what don't out of curiosity you know especially since you're looking to pitch well I wouldn't even say pitch now but really complete these new projects what what don't you think that you understand about it is it just the idea of asking people for an idea like the obligation of trying to fulfill what they want more than your vision is that no, I guess, I guess it's just such. I guess it has less to do with Kickstarter and more, just, just not knowing. I mean, I don't know why. Like, I go in and I pitch a game to a bunch of publishers. I have no idea if they're gonna take it. But for some reason, like that, I'm like, okay, I can go do that because that's like a yes or no or whatever. But like, when you when you put in like you know when you you know that you, there seems like this direct relationship with like you know how much effort you put in and all that stuff. So it's like. It's like, I know that what I would have to do on that is I would have to just dedicate myself to that so that I make a really good video and do, so that if it failed, I wouldn't be like, well, I kind of, you know, phoned it in on that one. Um, <laughs> you know, like, you'd really have to put in a lot of effort. Uh, but at the same point in time, that doesn't, nothing, nothing in this world guarantees success. But I guess that's just the thing is just having no idea. Like when I talk to Holly and I'm like, 
you know, how much do we ask for? It's like, you clearly should ask for what you need to make the game. But you like, yeah. could you ask for less and then be like, well, you know what? Like, then, you know, at least if we get that, we don't completely lose all the money and then we can maybe find the rest of the money elsewhere. So maybe we should aim low. Um, and then, you know, there's, uh, uh, but it's like, you know, can we ask for, you know, what we think this game will cost? Can we ask for like $150,000? You know, like, will people do that? Like, we're not, we're not, I mean, we're not super well known, you know? I mean, we're not, and I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things. One, the one thing I do think that I like about it is, is that I'm getting to a point now. I'm getting to a jaded point now in my indie developer career that, like, I, like a lot of, I'm, 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 I'm a little burnt out on, like, certain aspects. And I'm trying to get back to like a 40, 50 hour week and spend some time with my daughter and stuff like that. So I like, I kind of like the shit or get off the pot aspect of it. I like, you know what? <laughs> I do. I like, I like the idea that it's like, we need, let's say we need $150,000 to make this. Okay. Right? Uh, if we, I can say we need $150,000 to make this game. And people can say, oh, that's not that much. People can say, what? That's ludicrous. That's way too much. At the end of the day, if we make that, we make the game. If we don't make that, we don't make the game, right? right? And it almost like puts the decision out of your hands, right? It's like if the ecosystem will support that, then I, then that, then they will get that. And if it will not, then they will not get that, right? Um, I guess, it, I guess at the end of the day, in the back of my mind, I know that I'm going to get another game out. <laughs> so, so that part of me says, if it's going to take 150 to make it, right? Could you ask for like, you know, whatever? like 100 or 50 or whatever and get that much and then pick up contract work so that you can make it so you can make the rest of it or whatever you know what i mean um because you know that at the end of the day it's not like you're gonna just walk away i'm not i'm not gonna be like well couldn't find it looks like i'm gonna go back to dreamworks or whatever you know um i just don't see that happening so by the way this is the level this is where i did it Oh yeah. Yeah, just just so people know, I, I'm I'm gonna do this it. Is, uh, this is not again. easy level to do that, I don't think. Well, if you've been watching, I've been getting pretty close. I'm just trying to get my my skill back up there. Yeah, I'm trying to get the thumbs back in shape. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's level five, five dash nine. Five nine. For this. The, yeah. the um, you know what? The, you know what drives me kind of crazy when we talk about Twitch mechanics. What's that? Whenever I go to um, like conferences and stuff like that. Like if I go to PAX to show it off, right? Um, a lot of times they'll have TVs and those TVs won't have like game mode. So they'll have like, you know, filtering and stuff on them. So what'll happen is I will connect this thing. And I think part of the problem is my laptop. My laptop kind of sucks. And whenever I do HDMI out, like it always lags a little bit. And when you're playing a Twitch game, like, for it to lag a little bit drives me crazy because I tuned these controls for a while. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, when it doesn't respond to me or when I go through and I can't, whoa, that was pretty good. Yeah, um, I'm going to get there, I promise. But when I go through and there's just a little latency and then someone's playing with me and they're like, oh, it's not that bad. I'm like, no, you don't get it. Like, the game doesn't feel like this. Like, you are not experiencing the game because I'll see them die. <laughs> I'll see them die and I'll be like, you shouldn't have died there. You, you made the right moves, but the controller wasn't responding fast enough, you know? It drives me absolutely crazy to play the game in that non-optimal setting. It's much worse then sometimes when you play it on a monitor that's just like the colors are all whacked out and you can't tell the difference between... I, we played, we pitched on one where you couldn't tell the difference between the toms, the color was so bad. You know? It was like orange tom and green tom. Which tom am I? Because they both look like puke whatever. And uh... <laughs> so... That, but that doesn't bother me as much as control. Like if, if you, the control doesn't respond to you, that drives me crazy. And it happens so frequently at these conferences and stuff when you're trying to show people the game and it's like you got an arm tied behind your back. It drives me crazy. Yeah, well, it's funny that you bring that up because I am I am an old school gamer. I, Castlevania and Mega Man are two of my favorite franchises just mm -hmm. overall. Actually, they just came up with that Mega Man United or something like that. 
and just and it's pretty cool. I didn't really care for Street Fighter Cross Mega Man that much. I don't know if you've played any of those games, but it's just it's really cool to see the fans come out and do it. And it feels it feels like Mega Man, but there's more there's always more to it. And is the control really that good? Is can you slide? You know, can you charge up your Mega Buster? What about the jump mechanics? You know, how does that feel? It really does make a huge difference, and if it's not the same, then, you know, crap. I remember a long while back when the GameCube was still the thing, I, had, I bought the Mega Man Anniversary Collection, and a lot of people might not know this, but they reversed the B and the A buttons on the GameCube control, and there was no way, since it's a console game, that you could change it. I mean, how, how freaking crazy is that? You know, for a Mega Man game? Are you kidding yeah, me? That's pretty crazy. So that's, I don't. Someone's just being an idiot. Yeah, I mean. Well, I mean, it, but could you configure them? No, you, you could not configure them at all. Yeah, that's I, crazy. I mean, it, it, it's a console yeah. game. So I remember Electronics Boutique back when that still existed or was a thing. <laughs> they were taking, they were taking games back and exchanging them, which is like a huge no-no. Right. So, uh, uh, Fenrax asking about the, the chain. The, the chain, what defines the chain, I, we give you a certain amount of time after you've absorbed an energy pellet, and then all of a sudden it'll, like, that energy chain thing in the top Oh! Right. Damn what? it! This is 13, this is 14, this is 15. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> this is the one, man. This is what you do. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Yeah. But, but this is what's kind of fun is because I made like a lot of these levels like very geometric. Uh, you know, like with these straight lines, the drones move at the same right. rate. So like, that's what's kind of fun is, is that you can reset and try again. Because at first, uh, the guy that I was originally making the game with, we were talking about making the puzzles and making things randomized. So that every time you play, we shifted the puzzle around and, and shifted the drones around and stuff like that. And even though that sounds really cool, that's super aggravating because it's like in a game that punishes you, you know, it's kind of like being like playing Super Meat Boy and then they just change where all the saws are all the time. You just can't, you can't kind of improve like that. Oh, um, dude, I mean, Super Meat Boy is awesome. Yeah, that's a... That, oh that, that, my that's god! A oh! 17! Ah! Oh, 19! <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, it's right there. 19. See, this, this is where I did it. It's yeah, so you know what? You know what I also kind of love that we did? Like, when the energy, like, we made it so that, like, you know, you can only have so much energy on the game. And then we made it so that when you get too much energy, it just starts going off to the right. It just keeps going. Yeah. And that kind of reminded me of, like, old school games when, like, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't completely account for certain things, and when you overclock, like, it would just, like, weird things would happen. And that's not a weird thing, but I just kind of, like, we were, th we like, at first we were thinking about, like, doing some elegant things, you know? And I was like, nah, just make it keep going to the right forever, you know? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so Fenrak, what it is is that as you get the energy, it'll, like, that energy chain will start to fade, and if you get hit by a drone, it immediately drops out and you lose your chain. But otherwise, you have probably about like, you know, two or maybe two seconds or something like that to get the next one, or else it'll die. And you'll start to see it fade, and then you'll grab the next one and it'll light up again. So it has, it has to do with doing it in a certain amount of time from the last one that you grabbed, and then and also not dying. Um, so yeah. yeah. It's pretty tricky. It really is. There, I think there is an achievement for overfilling the bar. There is an achievement, I think, for when you go over a thousand points of energy and basically the game creates an energy pellet that doesn't have a container. I think we have an achievement for that. We did some we did some we did some really weird achievements. Like whenever something weird would happen in the game, we'd be like, that sounds like an achievement. Because I view achievements, I didn't want I so I did give you an achievement each time you beat an area of the game, right? Right. So I did do that. But I don't like achievements that are just you know, completely BS. I like achievements that force you to play the game in a different way. And like my ultimate, my ultimate um, example of this um, is Holly, my wife, was playing Fable 2. And she was complaining to me that she was having trouble finding someone to get into a threesome with. And 
Okay. I was like, I was like, I can call some people, and she was like, no, in the game, Apple. And I'm like, why are you trying <laughs> to get into a threesome in the game? And she's like, because it's an achievement. And I'm like, it is? And the thing is, is that she loved that game so much, and like, Holly doesn't usually get too hyper into games. When she gets into them, I think she just super gets into them. It's kind of all or nothing for her. And she was so into that game that when she beat it, she was so disappointed. And then she got the DLC and she beat that in like five, uh, in, in like in like five, um, you know, hours or whatever. And she hungered for more. And so she saw all these achievements that allowed her to play the game in a way that she wouldn't normally play. Like she wasn't the type who was normally going to, you know, go try and find two random strangers to have sex with. Right. Um, yeah. But but it was an achievement. And, and I did the same thing, like when I was playing Bionic Commando, uh, rearmed or whatever, yeah. like there, there were some achievements in there, and I was like, well, fuck, and it made me play the game in a completely different way, and I love that. Those achievements um, were brutal. Yeah, they were. They so were. Can, can I tell you, sorry for interrupting you again, can I tell you that in Mega Man 9, I got the achievement for being the game without dying? Wait. I want you to just think about that for a minute. Yeah, are you talking about Bionic Commander Rearm? No, no, no. In Mega Man 9. Oh. Yeah. I got... They have some ridiculous achievements, too. Beat I got the, the game without dying? I beat the game without dying. You have played that game a lot. Well, so the secret actually is... You can save it in between each stage. So if you die, you can just reload it without a problem. However, however... Once you get to the Wily stages, you cannot save anymore. And of course, they're the hardest stages in the game. But there is a... and Mega Man 10, there's an achievement that's even worse. I don't know who would ever put the time in to get this. It's called Mr. Perfect. You can look it up right now. Don't take any damage. The whole game. A Mega Man game? Don't take damage? Are you kidding me? Well the, well, the thing is, is that, like, in order for them to put those in there, they have to, they have to have had someone that did, like, and I don't know that that's true. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly. I think that's one of those that you put in there and someone could probably do it, you know? Uh, but, but, like, nobody on the team knows if it's possible. <laughs> right. Dude, yeah. Dark Souls, I just started playing, I, I started playing Dark Souls. One my, um, yeah, one of my favorite games of all time, actually. Dude, everyone loves them some Dark Souls. And I was like, I have to play this game, because Holly and I love RPGs. And okay. it's an action RPG. It, it basically and is, yeah. I started playing it, and I put it down. Because I got to... Well, first of all, because there was a lot of time between me playing it. But I was only on the second eight stage, right? And I ran into some skeletons, and they were kicking my ass. And I know exactly I think, where you are. Yeah, it, it, it's right after the right after the crow brings you to like the second area. Yeah, the Firelink Shrine. Yeah, you yeah, try. Like, we're like, trying I'm, to I'm, go I'm, to the catacombs. I'm like, I cannot beat these fucking skeletons. And normally, I would say, fuck the skeletons. I'm gonna go somewhere else. But for some reason, I never look to the right where there's this like path up to that bridge. There's this like, because my eye, I feel like the level design is drawing my eye to these ruins. And I'm crawling around these ruins, and so my assumption is that the thing, because I can't find anywhere else to go, what I have to do is kill these skeletons. And like, they were kicking my ass, and I fought, and I started like beating one or two, and then I was just like, ah, oh, I can't deal with it. And so then I, I don't know why, um, the, yeah, they, yeah, I did go the wrong way. So I don't know why I didn't do this. I'm out of the habit of using game facts and stuff like that. Like because I'm just like, oh, whatever, I'll figure it out. But a lot of times game facts and stuff like that can be really useful if you're just like, hey, I'm gonna put down the controller right now because clearly I've missed some kind of UI hint or level design hint. And when all of a sudden I, I saw that, I was just like, oh shit, and it's not hidden. It's not like anything like that. Like just for whatever reason, you know, you, you gotta get stuck down this rabbit hole and you're just like, I can't do this thing. So now I'm back to this. So now Dark Souls, the game has been reawakened to me, so. I will wait until the next time that I can't figure out where the hell I'm going. And well, then... uh, but that's the beauty of old school game design, right? I mean, it's obviously different from a puzzle game, but I, I think there's some similarities you can draw. Yeah. It, it's it's not... How do I put this? I think it's similar to a puzzle game in the fact that... It, in, so what, what I did with this game, we were going to have levels of difficulty, and I eliminated them. Because I was like, you know what? 
in a puzzle game, I know it's a Twitch mechanic game too, but there's like, I beat this, right? I'll, I beat this game, I beat this level, and I didn't do it because I was on like, you know, easy or anything like that. This is just what the level is, right? And so everybody kept like, no, the people switch difficulty levels and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make one difficulty level. And, th and that's kind of like what they're doing in Dark Souls, right? It's just right. like, this is the world. You've got a sword, you've got a shield. Everybody is the same. I mean, other than, you know, leveling up your stats and stuff like that. Like, everyone faces this skeleton, everyone faces this stuff, and that's just the way the world is. And if it's tough, get better, right? If it's tough, get better, yeah. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, like, just fucking try harder. <laughs> well, the great thing about Dark Souls is that you can beat that game without any armor on at all. Matter of fact, you could, you could beat the game with, like, one of the starting weapons if you wanted to. And that, that's the thing, it's just, it's all there for aesthetic value. Yeah, for the people that don't know or haven't gone through the game multiple times like I have, it seems like, all right, well, I'm gonna get an upgrade, I gotta use my shield, I gotta do all this, but it's actually not true at all. That's the best part about that game. Maybe you didn't even know it. That, did, you, can, did you? that you can go through without upgrading? Yeah, you can beat that game at soul level one if you want to. Then, I, mean, I, I mean, isn't that kind of like saying, like, you can beat a virus named Palm without stealing energy, but it is really fucking hard? <laughs> oh, right, right. I'm not sure if you can. You probably can. Well, there was one level, actually, no, you, you can't oh, beat this you game. Oh, can. yeah. you can't. because I forced you to on levels where I'm trying to teach you that mechanic. Yep. And I think, actually, so there's an achievement, um, there's an achievement oh. that I, so, what's kind of funny is, is that on some of these levels, it's really hard not to steal it, right? Right. So, uh, and we thought that was funny, so we made achievements that are kind of reversed. Like, there's there's an achievement in a, in three different levels, I think, to not steal energy. Like, beat this level, and it's not don't uh, because it's difficult because you need the extra energy. It's difficult because there are so many drones flying around that suddenly you have to give the drones a weight. You know, you have to give them like a distance so that you don't accidentally steal an energy pellet, um, right. which is actually tough. And what you have to do is you go through half of it, and when a drone's coming at you, and you, if you dodge out of the way, you just gotta take it and die, and and so that you don't steal the energy. It's actually, I found like getting those that when we we came up with those achievements, I played these levels like so many times, and all of a sudden, well, like, you had to. That's what you want an achievement to be. You want it to be like you have to play the game in a completely foreign way. And that's exactly what it was. Like all of a sudden, I was playing a level that I had played like a thousand times, and I was playing in a completely different manner. And that was, that that just felt awesome. So you said, I love hearing this from, from people, especially those that design video games. Right in the beginning, Fire Link Shrine, you're getting your ass kicked by some skeletons, and you're going, "Frick, man! You know what do I do? You know this is this is dumb. Come on. Well, maybe not dumb, but depending on who you are, you can easily get frustrated. Yeah. I mean, easily. It, it's just yeah. that kind of game, right? Yeah. So, there it is. Twenty chain. Bam. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. You yeah. did it. Look at that. You just called. You just called your shot. You just made it. While you were talking to somebody. I, I know. You know what? I'm actually really proud of myself. And yeah. <laughs> look, at all that, look at all that energy. Those, those capsules that are just blocking me. Like... <laughs> I know. It's so funny. But uh, going back to my original statement. So you start off in the Firelink Shrine, right? And right. You know, the raven drops you off. And there's just no direction. You talk to Spooky Dude A and Spooky Dude B. And you're like, well, okay. So there's like five different directions for you to go. Instead yeah. of an arrow like in Bioshock pointing to you, you know, hey, go this way, the game teaches you where to go and where not to go by kicking your ass. Yeah. And that's well, I would say yes. I would say that it's my fault for not exploring more, perhaps. Um, I think that, and I'm fine with that, um, but, but w what is the side effect of that? Is, is that I did, like, I did put down the game. Like, not out of frustration, like, screw this game. You know, I was playing it, and, you know, I saved it, and I went to bed, and then the next day I wake up, and I go to, and, I, and I, you know, I've got a thousand games in my library that I haven't played, and I'm, like, looking at Dark Souls, and I'm like, hmm, I want to go, like, get punished by skeletons some more, you know? Or could I play this brand new indie game that I just downloaded? You know what I mean? So I think that that's the fear, is, is that, like, 
even with even with a gamer, like I don't consider myself someone that appreciates like you know overly being handheld. Um, like leave me all the way, and I don't want that arrow. I don't want that path. Like I realize that, and like when you turn off the guides in Fable, it makes it a much better game. Um, yes. But you know, and and, the, and you know, um, and in Grand Theft Auto, if you didn't have the you know the the necessarily like the waypoints on the map, and you had to learn the city, that would make it, I think, a better game. Um, and all all that stuff. So. I, I appreciate those games, but I understand that that's what they that because gamers have a preconceived notion based on like you know current titles where you are going to be handheld, and then also because of the fact that um, you know people will simply there's just so much consumable media out there that it's easy to not pick something back up if you know you're frustrated or whatever. So it's just kind of like a risk that you run, and I think I think I decided when I was making my game. So there is a level, uh, two point six. Uh, there is a level when I'm right after I teach you what a glitch is. Okay. Okay. There's a level where there is a line of drones, straight across, moving slowly, right? And you don't have enough energy to die and beat the level. Okay. And what happens is everybody. Oh, here we go. <laughs> No, keep you keep need going, keep going. I, I just I wanted to, to show some people this and what yeah. but let's keep but, going. But, but but in the level you die and so what happens is people run out and they get their butt kicked, but it happens really fast and then they respawn and they die on average like eight or nine times before they remember like, oh I can drop a glitch. And then when they drop a glitch, it stops the drone and then they have to wait and then it creates a gap, right? And then they can get through that gap. Right? And that level, I guarantee you, a lot of people stopped playing at that because that was in the demo. And a lot of people just simply stopped playing it and said, this game sucks, right? And I made that decision that I, that I was willing to lose those people. Because the people that figured it out and were like, oh, that's really fucking cool, I felt like I had them at that point and they were like, gonna love this game. Mm. And I felt the people that I lost were the people that I lost. Now, from a, from a financial standpoint, <laughs> That might not have been a great decision. Well, well no. Like a... I, I, let me interrupt you right there, though. I, I think that's it's a bad mindset to have because you're. I think personally, I think you're going down the right path because you have to choose what kind of demographic you're going to be catering to, right? I mean, everyone always has to decide that. You were talking about how you helped develop and animate all of these Pixar titles, which end up raking in millions and millions of dollars. So your demographic was obviously for kids, but. You throw in all that subtle humor too, where adults and basically families would be able to enjoy it. And movies like The Incredibles, which I even like, it just it could be entertaining enough for someone who's you know middle aged or younger than that to even enjoy it. So that's also how video games, in my opinion, are crafted. Right in the beginning, you go, all right, you know what kind of game am I gonna make? You know, a virus named Tom. Anybody can play it. But the ceiling is where. People don't want to learn anymore, or they just get frustrated. Almost like some of these old school games we've been talking about, right? You know, how many times have you died in Mega Man and just gone, "All right, I'm done, just, I'm done taking it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out for like a walk, or I'm gonna have some dinner. I'm gonna, you know, what? I'm gonna take a shower and wash the filth away. Right. Everyone gets like that, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I really think that. It's just, it's a choice. It's how, it's how those games are made. There's no, there's no game out there, none, even movies, where every single person can truly enjoy it. It's a pick yeah. or choose system, and that's well, how it goes. And this is kind of the motivation behind like some of the decisions I'm making with Duskers right now, right? Um, with Duskers, I'm making a lot of design decisions that, like, like I said, the producer in me is like, what are you doing, right? I'm making you manually control each drone. I added a command line interface the other day to it, where you fucking type in commands in order to make the drones execute things. You know what I mean? Like, these are not incredibly accessible Web 2.0 kind of ways to play a game. Um, and I think it would be fun to pitch this to a publisher just to watch their eyes bulge up, right? Um, and I'm making these decisions because I say I'd rather have, like, core gamers that love this crap that I'm doing play it rather than have like you know try and please all audiences and try to compete with people that have way bigger budgets and you know have you know studied you know what everyone in the world likes to do you know I'm making games basically 
I'm myopically making games for me, and in doing so, I'm making the best game for me I can make, right? You won! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I mean, it's obviously a two-player experience, but... Yeah, it is. It is. This one... You know what? It's funny. I thought I was on the train, and I was thinking, like, because my friend, I've never played Gunstar here. Not Gunstar here. Oh, great game if you've never played I, it. I, I'm not, I'm, I meant to say Samurai Gun. Uh, so I'd, I'd never played Samurai Gun, but he was just talking about versus how much he loved it. And I was thinking about this game and how simple it was. And I was like, you know what? Like, maybe I could make a versus mode for this. Even though I promised myself after a virus named Tom and getting 6% of people and not having the network in that I wouldn't make multiplayer games. Um, I was like, all right, let me try this. And it's funny because after a day of development, it was more fun than the single player, which by comparison, only took four days to develop, so these were both the fastest of my prototypes. But still, it was uh, it was one of those things that like it's it's just that's the thing about designing games is sometimes you just come up with ideas and you just throw them out there, and then you make and like what's interesting about this game is some of the things that I'm doing in the versus mode. I was like, you know what? Maybe I could bring that back into the single player mode. Um, and it's stuff that I wouldn't have thought of if I wasn't designing a game that was a versus mode, you know what I mean? Um, yes. It's really interesting how you can just have this stew of things and just dump... It's like, where, does, where do ideas come from? Where does, where does like creativity or a good idea or whatever come from, right? You knocked yourself into space. Um, but where, where does that stuff come from? And, and sometimes you just... You can't sit down with a pen and paper and be like, this is the greatest game ever. You just gotta, like this game, literally, I knew the mechanic was so simple that I was like, so if you hold jump right now, um, either with a down arrow or whatever the other oh, one is. Oh, that's what it is, yeah. Uh, so if you hold the jump button, you continue to ricochet until you let go of it. That's pretty sweet. And, yeah, and so that's a simple mechanic, right? But then you run out of jumps. You're out of jumps now, and the other guy can just snipe you. Um, but and so that makes it a cat and mouse game. And then the thing is, is that when you guys collide with each other, whoever has the higher ricochet chain is going to win that collision. So if you jump straight at them, and they bounce off a wall, they're going to win. So it's kind of a game of indirection, um, and it's really simple. Uh, but it's it's I, I mean at least. Sometimes it's deceiving when you're playing multiplayer games with a crowd because everybody's cheering and you know you get a little bit like, wow, this is really great. But people are really having a lot of fun with this and it's like such a simple, simple game. Um, and so with this game, instead of designing everything out, like now the versus mode I designed out a little bit, but with this original game, what I said was I was like, I'm going to make a game and you're a spear and you hit a button and you ricochet and when you let go, you stick and that's the end of it. And when, and I'm gonna make guards that go back and forth that you have to sneak past. And if that's fun, then I will continue to make that game and evolve it from that base mechanic. And if that is not fun, then I give up. Now, games like Chess the Gathering and Dusters are a little bit more complicated in the fact that you can't just be like, I'm going to make the drone move. And if that's fun, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> if that's not fun, I'm going to give up. But, but I do believe there is this sense of, instead of designing out the game the way you think it's gonna go, um, you know, take those base mechanics and start putting them in and see where they lead you. Because it's like, you'll probably end up with a, I think, with a more fun game if you let the game tell you what it is than if you try and force the game on itself. If that makes any kind of sense. I'm just excited to see what you're actually going to do with all this. So, are you, are you, do you have to choose a game or are you going to try and make all three of these at the same so, time? I don't know. Like, I, the idea was is that we'd make three prototypes, we'd figure out which one we like the best and which one the community liked the best, and we'd just go with that, right? And now it's like, you know, of course I'm falling in love with all of them, and I'm taking too long and stuff like that. Holly is like, we're gonna make them all eventually because that's just who you are, but we gotta figure out which one we make first. She wants to make The Last Shadow. She wants to make this one first. Because, as I said, I've developed this whole thing in a week, like this thing is like a day and a half of work, and it, it's just, she feels like we could make this in, in less than two years. Uh, and that's like a big factor for her. Um, so what, would you add things to it? Like different obstacles, obviously, different ways. Is it, is it just gonna be exclusively a multiplayer title or do you think that you'd throw in some kind of AI? What do you think? 
So my friend, so this is just the versus mode. So there's a single player mode for this as well. Right, okay. Uh, that I don't expose here, uh, where you have to sneak in and you, the idea is that you sneak in, you steal something and you kill everybody on the way out. Um, so on the way <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, so you sneak, it's actually got a story, which I am a story nerd and some games don't need them. And I don't think this one does, but I, it's there anyway. And it was the original motivation for this game. Uh, it's a very dark story. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so basically the idea is that you, on the way in, you avoid all the guards. Then there's a room where you either have to battle a boss, you have to steal something. And then on the way out, you have to intersect all of the guards. Um, so that that's kind of the motivation behind that. And then what we would do is evolve those mechanics. One of the things that I want to do with it, which is really weird, and this is again just because I'm going through this design adolescence. With a virus named Tom, you went from level 0 to level 54, right? On, a, on, on this line. Right. And and, and that's what I would do with this game. But I decided that I wasn't going to do that. I decided that what I was going to do was uh, sit there and have... What I want to do is I want to make your choices matter. So whether or not you kill the guards, whether or not you decide to steal the thing, you know, all of these things. So I want it to be a branching narrative that has that exponential growth. But it can afford that exponential growth because there's only like four levels in the game. Uh and you just keep replaying it and different things happen. And there's a story, that's where the story element comes in. There's this guy telling a story and the story changes based on your actions. Um, huh. Which is really weird, which is really weird because this is a game that you could definitely argue doesn't need that. <laughs> well, well, right, I mean, that's what I was just thinking too, is that a lot of, you know what, to be realistic though, I just don't know how many people would, would buy a game that's that only has the versus mode, right? Even though you'd obviously make it look a lot nicer, throw in some more mechanics, stuff that you just don't even know right now. Time to come out, we'll say, you know, fast forward two years from now. And let's say you buy it for like five bucks or whatever it is that it's gonna release at. Yeah, how many people are, are gonna play it beyond like the first week? I, I was actually really surprised and sort of excited for you to say, let's make it something a little bit bigger, you know, something that's different. Yeah, we want you to do the versus mode, but what about like some kind of crazy single player, like Breakout? <laughs> it's like you know, it's like Pong, but oh, there's a story like you're this, you're a freaking bar, and you have to run from place to place and just play the game. It, it just it seems interesting, and I think that it's personally going to be better instead of just being, I don't know, some. No offense, but just some kind of like forgettable title that someone's gonna pick up on some ridiculous Steam sale and just go, oh, that's kind of cool, and then. This is my done. constant argument with Holly because like we constantly go back and forth on this. She's like, you spend way too damn long on a title, and I say I do. But if I spend less time on the title, then it's gonna be either a crap game or it's gonna be a great game that no one's gonna fucking care about because it's gonna either look ugly or it's not gonna have that polish or it's not gonna have this. You know what I mean? It's like. You can do that on certain platforms, but I feel like Steam and console, if that's what we're aiming at, it's such a competitive atmosphere and there's such a high level of polish on everything that if you if you don't have that polish, you, you just don't exist. So it's like, it's like, it's kind of like a, another indie was like, thought the versus mode was so fun. He's like, dude, polish this up. And he's like, and put this thing out on Ouya just to see what would happen. And that's, that's not a bad idea just because it's like, you know, that's, you know, something that you could develop for quite easily and put something out just to almost gauge, you know, if it was fun, you know what I mean? And they've got some co-op or some, some versus mode, like tower fall and stuff like that. Um, but at the same point in time, it's like, I don't know, that's just not where my mentality is. My mentality is always around like sculpting this thing that, like look at Tom, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pipe game mixed with some kind of Twitch mechanic, like taking, you know, some might say too far. <laughs> it's like, well, but, but you it's got know what makes the... in it. It's got artwork yeah. in it. It's got all this, this music in it and all this stuff. And they're like, you know, was it dumb to do that or was it smart to do that? I'm like, I, I think it was smart to do it. I, I mean, it's all the little things that add up. You just said it. You, you take something, quote unquote, you know, dumb like Tom and it's pipe dream mixed with just a couple of other things. But I mean, come on, the music's great. You've got the little animations, I think, are really what make this game work. And the way that you craft the levels, you really, it's a snowball yeah. effect, right? You start. I, I think it is. I think that you can see the love that was put into the game when you play this game. And everybody's always talking about the level of polish and all that stuff. But it, then, the, I guess, 
The question is, if I had made this game and I had not put that level of polish into it, made another game and had not put that level of polish into it, like, are you increasing your odds that you're going to resonate with people if, by, by churning out more games, you know, uh, with different ideas? Um, I, I don't know the answer. I think personally that, like, it's just a marketplace that won't support, like, half of, you know, half of a project, you know what I mean? Well, like, without it, it, all the yeah. polish. Right. Because at the same point in time, it's not like this thing made so much money that we're like, oh, okay, we're good, you know? So it's like, but then I say, like, there's no way that we're going to even get close to making any money making, you know... Or a sequel. Half of a game or whatever. A sequel would be ideal because then you could reuse the assets and stuff like that. But just given the amount of... I mean, A Virus Named Tom has gotten a ton of love, but it hasn't been, like, a huge financial success for us or anything like that. So for me to then put a second egg in that same basket seems scary to me. Um, even though that basket is less risky because we could, you know, we could we could develop it faster and do it that way. I just don't know. I think who's doing that really well right now is Ian, Ian Stalker. Because oh, I yes! I love Ian. Yeah, he's, he's I think great. Scapegoat, like, you know, I think that one, everybody passed up on that and, like, it they got did. some, it got a lot of love. But a lot of people didn't know about it, so I think that's a perfect time to make a scapegoat too, because it's like you can reuse a lot of things, even though they're making it look totally different. He can reuse the engine and crank that game out faster than he could an original title, even though he makes games way faster than me. Um, but uh, but that seems like a perfect thing for me. I feel like with a virus named Tom too, certainly maybe that would get more people into the game and and stuff like that. But I worry that it's like you know, I worry that like I I, I tapped into a marketplace and that marketplace said to me you know what we like this kind of game but a lot of people are like eh, i don't really play puzzle games eh, i don't really play twitch games like you know what i mean so i'm like throwing another game into that <laughs> <laughs> well ian i remember speaking to him with the whole escape code thing and that was that was actually back when i was working for a different company and i, I totally forgot you guys were friends by the way right <laughs> yeah, us, us, us Bay Area types, we just uh, we drink at the same spots. <laughs> well, yeah, he does all the music himself, and he loves trailers. I remember him specifically saying that he almost felt like he wanted to create the game just so he could make the trailer. He made like the greatest trailer for that and didn't release it, and then he released it later. Did you ever see the one with Escape Go or Soulcaster? We're talking about how they have six different types of gra like grass tiles and stuff like that. No, for, no, I haven't. It's crazy. It's like this uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You know, it's like <laughs> it's one of these. It's one of these like go buy a uh, Soulcaster, and it's just it's it's the, it's one of the funniest trailers I've seen. And, and he was like, "Should I release this?" Because I was going to, but then I never finished editing it. I was like, "Dude, like this is absolute gold. Yes, you should release this." Like, <laughs> I see shit like every week I make a video and it's not gold, man. It's like, you know, it's just whatever I'm doing that week. So it's like, well, it's right. like, yes, push that out. Listen, I, I I would love to see a sequel to A Virus Named Tom. I know I would, but obviously, <laughs> financially, you need to be able to be secure once the game is completed and you know that people are actually in demand. And I think that's the hardest part about being any kind of yeah. indie developer because you don't know exactly what people want. You yeah. know what? Here's a great example, right? So, do you know Coffee Stain just, Studios? Just so you know, in five minutes I gotta bust out of here because yeah. I guess I got my... That's but fine. Yeah, because yeah, okay. I, probably, I probably should get something to eat, too. But, <laughs> do you know Coffee Stain Studios? Uh, maybe. I'm not good with studio names. Okay, they... alright. Well, they were operating out of a college dorm. And they made Sanctum. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, but it's the they always tout it as the world's first first person tower defense game. Right. And it worked really well. It, and I don't think they made that much on it. Like they did all right. And right. I met them at uh, PAX East uh, this year actually. We were just we were at the the Wild Star get together and one of the developers Armin and his his friend too Oscar they were just talking to me about the game and the troubles that they went through. A lot of it sounds actually very similar to your situation. They just weren't sure what direction they wanted to go, if they wanted to do something new, because you know they could reuse the assets, but they decided to make Sanctum 2, straight up, and they changed. They overhauled it. You know, they changed a bunch of the core mechanics, and nobody knew that they wanted the game, and then it came out, and it got 
I'd say pretty close to universal phrase. I think IGN gave it like an 8.5, and I know we did a review on it and a few other people. So, I mean, it, obviously it's up to you overall, but I would just, I'd love to see what you have under that hat. <laughs> you've, got, you've got those three awesome sounding ideas. Roguelikes are kind of in right now. That's the only, you know what, that's almost the thing that like, I'm so contrarian right now. It's almost like I'm like, oh god, like am I gonna put out like another rogue? Like, but the beauty is, is that I take so long to make a game that by the time it was done, they'd be out, <laughs> and then I'd be, I'd be all counterculture. <laughs> well, you would, two, two, two. This was really last minute. Uh, nobody was prepared for it. I actually kind of forced Tim to come on here and just do a, a live stream. I was and talk. sitting there and I was moping around because I was like, I was like, I was in this weird funk where I was just like. You know, it's like when something's been out for a year and then you like start reevaluating everything and you're like, why don't I have another title like that I'm promoting right now? Like, what am I doing <laughs> at all? And I was just kind of like wallowing in that for like like 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden, like you came on and you were just like, dude, why are you not live streaming? And I'm like, I don't really have a, I have like a channel, but like blah, blah, blah. And you're like, let's do this shit. And I was just like, yeah, let's do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Man, we actually, this was awesome. It was a yeah. ton of fun to be able to just stream it, and I got to show you my crazy yeah, achievement. Yeah, you got, you got to bust out the, the, the 20 chain. Right, yeah, I think that's pretty sweet. And we got a chance to look at The Last Shadow and just ah, pick your brain a little bit about the game in general, you know? Yeah, I think I should try some streaming. I think it'd be fun Do it. just so that people could ask questions. And I also think it'd be really fun to go through the levels and talk about, like, some of the, especially because a lot of people ask me about the level design, and I think it'd be kind of fun to go through and be like, all right, this level, like, we started and it totally didn't work, and this is what we changed. Like <laughs> well, everyone always likes to hear from the developer, and you know what? Don't feel bad about not utilizing Kickstarter, but I'm just gonna put this out there and say, think about it. Just do it. Chris Park, I kind of wish that he came on here uh, to talk to you. We talked during E3, he just was in a different session than you. He, he has a lot of problems believing in Kickstarter just because he feel he gets the extra stress. Like he thinks that he's right. obligated to a lot of people and, and right. he is in a lot of ways, but you know, hey, they put they gave a Valley Without Win 2 to everybody who bought the first game. Just straight right. up because just because. Right. And it's things like that, you know, depending on you know, who you are, that could really benefit you or not. But I, I really think about the Kickstarter thing. All of your ideas, it's it's cool. It's going to be interesting. We're definitely, I think we're going to go that route because we went the publisher route. It was a giant pain in the ass. And as much of a pain as, you know, putting together a Kickstarter campaign and not knowing anything, it can't be that much harder than dealing with publishers. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, hey, before we take off then, because I know you got to get out of here and I know i got to get something to eat. Uh, so you're, you were running that contest. I know you talked a little bit about it before. Uh, so what's the timetables on that? Have you selected any of the cards yet? Just no, but we're getting, dude, those things are blowing my mind. Like, we really worried for a second. We really worried, because I was like, are we going to really give out our assets, our art assets? You know, that like Holly and Travis and everybody worked so hard on. Um, you know, because then like, you know, people could just rip them off or, you know, just do whatever with them. And I'm like, you know what, this is their community, they're fucking awesome. Like whatever let's just do it yeah. and it's like it's like anything it's just like you talk to unknown world you talk to any of these guys and it's like if you give the community anything like you will be happy that you did it and like just just today i mean they're already on our little thing they're always already these like uh you know three or four steam cards that like look really nice it's like it's gonna be something where it's like like you know how like you're always worried that like whenever you do a contest and I'm like one of the Steam cards is gonna be a fan art card and then I get yeah. worried and I'm like maybe we should put a ringer in there like <laughs> you know maybe we should just have Holly submit one under an alias just in case like they all are horrible so like we you know like we can have like a nice one in there you know and like immediately like the first three or four are just like really nice looking so it's like I'm pretty stoked that like the community is responding like this. So how long do they have to be able to make they these have, cards? 
I decided I'd give him a week because I don't think we'll be done with our Steam cards before a week anyway and Valve gets, takes like a little while to put them out so there's no huge rush so usually a week sounds about right because people hear about it and then you yeah. know you, they'll, they'll create one and then they'll then they'll have to work or whatever and then on a weekend night they can create another one or whatever because we did this for our, our holiday thing where people created like holiday avatars and we got like 20 something of them and they were really fun so it's like I'm, I was just worried that no one would do it because it's not like the avatar thing was just like paint this little avatar. But this thing's like do a 1920 by 1080 image, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I'll just whip something up. So it's like, uh, I'm actually pretty stoked that like we're getting stuff in. So did Valve actually contact you and say, hey dude, we're doing cards now. You in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. They, they, they contacted most, like everybody. And they just sent out like, here's the template, and like, here's how you do it, and like, send us your cards. And basically, like, Holly's so burnt out. She works a full time job, does the artwork. Like, we have a baby, all that stuff. Like, every each additional thing, like, I feel like it like puts this like giant ice pick in like the <laughs> in our marriage. <laughs> so I was like, I was like afraid to approach her on these, and I kind of, you know, I kind of said, let's do the scene card. She's like, okay, and like. Then all of a sudden there were backgrounds and badges and emoticons and all this stuff. And it was just kind of, and then it just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And everybody was like, when are you doing your Steam cards? We're, we're getting better sales because of our Steam cards. And then fans were like, where are the Steam cards? So then all of a sudden, finally, I, I, I was like, you know what? Let's just, I brought Brian on who did a lot of artwork on a virus name. Tom like helped us out. Uh, really talented guy. And I was just like, can you help us out? And he, he, happened to be in between gigs and he's just like, I can rock these out. So he rocked out the first one already that I, we put up there, the Dr. X one, and uh, and he's gonna rock out the rest of them. And actually one of the, one of, he messaged me today when one of the Steam cards came in from one of the fans. He's like, damn it, I was thinking about doing that for Tom or something like that. And I was just like, that's funny. There, it's really cool. Someone made one with Globotron, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> just, just the fact Globotron. Just the fact that we have a fucking robot named Globotron in our game is just ridiculous. Which I think is great, and in the eventual sequel, which I hope to one day see, I really hope that we... <laughs> maybe we see more of an impact from Globotron. Yeah, so in the sequel, that was one of the things... Wow, he's saying that 22% of players have played have the first co-op achievement. Yeah, I saw that. Hey, real quick, if you can look, check and see how many people have that 20 chain. While, while Tim's speaking. <laughs> so the thing is, is that you got to take that 22% into account. You also have to look at how many people have gotten the first single player achievement. You know what I mean? Right. Because like if it says 22%, right? And then the single player achievement is only like, you know, 30%. You, you, you know, so it's like, oh, only 0.9% have the 20 chain. Right, so what I did was I took 73 Right, because only 73% have the first single player achievement. So you've got to divide that, reduce that down, right? So you got to bump 73 to 100 and then follow, you know, follow that array. No. So, so basically, if only 73%, you, it's only 22% of the 73%, you know what I mean? So of the total players, that's like, that's less. Oh wait, no, that's more. Wait, holy crap, that's a lot higher than it used to be. It's so, it's so interesting, isn't it? You know, just seeing how many people unlock those achievements. Was, oh, you know what I did before was I took 73 per, I'm trying to do the math in my head. I think what I did was I said, okay, 73% have done the single player. Then the 22% is actually, like I put, you, you basically stretch 73 to be 100% because that's everyone who's really played the game, not just downloaded it and played the first level, right? Um, so that would actually make the 22% higher. So that's like a much larger percentage. Like it used to literally be 6% that I was always close. And now it's looking like it's, you know, closer to a quarter of people who played the co-op. That's, that's much, much better than it used to be. That's my request for you, Tim. Eventually, when you do roll out Online this Indiegogo or this Kickstarter right. thing for your other games, or if maybe somebody just decides to team up with you and you're like, all right, virus name Tom 2, let's do this now gotta have online co-op because it was yeah. just it's genius it is it's so much fun and i'm not just saying that you know to get gloating the comments from you I and mean, come on we've been talking for like two hours now i 
I just love how it's set up. It's just, it's so much fun. You can't go over yeah. to the other side to help yeah. your friend. You have to actually talk it, it, it out. It killed me when we had a launch without the, well, the, the online because I was like, I'm taking my baby and I'm like cutting its legs off. You know what I mean? It's just like, how can it run? Oh my God. Like, that's kind of what it felt like, man. It's like, how is this game going to do well if I'm taking, it's like if Monaco launched and they were just like, nope, no online co-op, right? It's just like, how would that game have done, you know? It's just like, it's really hurting, like Portal 2, you know? It's just like, it's really hurting it because a lot of reviewers, they were like, this co-op is really cool if, you, if you're willing to, you know, stand at your monitor with somebody. It would be a little bit different maybe if we were on console because of all the couch stuff. But, uh, but I really got to run because my daughter is waiting for yes, me. Yes, go, but, go, uh, go, go. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, yeah. man. Hey, it, it's my pleasure. Like I said, it's my job. It's what I do. And hopefully, yeah, we can help you set up a broadcaster sometime. Just give me a ring. Uh, for the rest of you, make sure give Tim a follow on uh, on his Twitter account. It's pretty, pretty hilarious. And he does come up with some stuff on his YouTube channel. As for us... This is a jump start for the Leviathan community. I'm Mr. Andrew Whipple, so give us a follow too. We'll be up and coming here. We've got a lot of a lot of new stuff coming into the office, and hey, that's what they brought me on for too. Doing a lot of little streams and such. So you'll see more from us in the future. And Tim, thanks again for all this. Anything you'd thanks like for to say? Me. It's convincing me to have fun talking about <laughs> my game on Stanford. Anytime, man. All right, all right let's man. let's end it. Okay. Later. Later. Thank you.